Uh, I will start my lecture with uh, saying that I'm a little bit stressed because I feel rather new to the topic, which is why I'll, I'll try to present it from a more theoretical stance uh, and also uh, this will be uh, a presentation which will reflect my current status of reflection on the topic. So there will be some chaos inside but also many questions that I have started opening for, for myself. Uh, when we are talking about sexual problems or sexual dysfunctions in gender and, uh, and sexual diversity uh, people, I think it's a reasonable thing to, uh, to ask about what is actually uh, sex the sexual function or what is actually, what does it mean to, to, to be sexually function, functional or to uh, function sexually. Uh, and I try to look for the, re for the response to this question in different models of, uh, of, sexual, of sexual response that we have. And I try to group the models according to, uh, to whether they are linear, for example. So there is only one root that eventually ends with a phase, and that's all. It's like a kind of an electrical discharge with no relation to whatever happens later on. Also, uh, there are some models that are more circular in nature, so that the consecutive phases uh, stay in the relation to each other and influence each other. And there are also some multifactorial models. And some of the models seem to describe some reality, or what we suppose or we treat as reality. And some of these models for me seem more to be a kind of manifest or a set of rules set of values that we, uh, that we want apply to apply to, to human sexuality, like for example with a good en uh, enough sex model. I'll try shortly to present some of the models uh, to you, not all of them, this is uh, a kind of a list of other, other models for you to check it up. But my basic question that I wanted to ask you now, maybe not now, but I, I will ask you the question now, but we try to find, to, uh, we'll try to find the answer together um, after my lecture with, and our discussion, <coughs> I thought it would be. And this is the question that I tried to, uh, started to ask uh, actually myself, which model fits to whom, uh, fits when, uh, in what circumstances, uh, uh, in what point of time of life, for example, and fits what, what kind of problem. And uh, I can see a kind of para parallelness in my life, as I mentioned to you several days ago, that I started as a psychiatrist uh, from such a New York Repellian uh, stance. So I believe that there are you know, separate entities uh, in nature, the, like diseases, and their classifications should you know, address these entities, and the whole therapeutic process should do the same. And actually, I think I started the same way with sexuality when I started with the models, which are still the paradigm in, uh, in, 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 in the, in the how do you say, um, um, how do you call it? mainstream sex, sex, sexology. These are actually the, the linear models. And this departure from linear models that I started making in my mind reminds me of the departure that I am making from the neoprotalinian psychiatry to a more uh, dimensional view to psychopathology, which is not, uh, which is looking for phenomena rather than, than, than the entities like, like diseases. And I'll concentrate on this model because it is a still mainstream paradigm. Uh, everything started in the 60s with the classical model of, of Masters and Johnson, who actually, this was the research-based model, observational-based model. They, they had a very interesting work, as you know, they observed more than the 10,000s of, uh, of, of, uh, of human sexual interactions. These were mainly students, so I, I think the work was very interesting. It made them be together then, and husband and wife, so, so there was a lot of, I think, sexual and erotic energy in their work. Uh, but that's uh, maybe, the, maybe the job. But they led, it led them, the research led them to assume that there is an excitation phase, the plateau phase, an orgasm phase, and resolution phase. There was the work of some other researchers, but, uh, plus uh, the work of uh, a psychiatrist from New York, uh, uh, Helen Kaplan-Zinger, who added the desire phase in the beginning, 
and put a plateau phase uh, to, to, to as the part of the excitation phase. And this, or, this model is still a paradigm when you look at the DSM or ICD-10 classifications, all the problems with sexual functioning are grouped according to the problems of the desire phase, the problem of the excitation phase, the problem of the orgasm phase, and here the criticism of the model begins. Because when I looked at the model, I noticed one thing. There is nothing said about the resolution phase, the disturbances. And when I teach my students about this model, I give them a question that maybe it is an important question. How did you feel after you had sex? Did you feel in harmony with the cosmic energy with your partner? Did you feel love, uh, good mood? Uh, did you feel relaxed, just happy? Or you felt guilty, frustrated, anxious, angry, ashamed, etc. So the question about this last phase, the resolution phase, seems to be very important for me. Uh, <coughs> there is summer pain here, and the pain can be present in all of the phases in the model. Uh, the pain, the sexual associated <coughs> with the pain associated with with, with sex. But there is nothing said, for example, about pain during anal sex, which can have some importance to our clients, which I wanted to point to your attention to later on. Um, the, another part, so part of criticism to the model is that, as you see, it's very uh, vaginal coitus uh, oriented. So the model assumes that there is a vaginal penetration that has to take place at some point. Actually, this is the central point, and it should lead to the orgasm. So it's very heteronormative, vaginal, vagina, vagina or, or, or oriented and orgasm oriented. And the question is, maybe it is science, purely scientific because it's based on thorough experiments, or maybe the subjects that participated previously believe that it should look like this. So it describes like, you know, Freudian theory, <coughs> It might describe just certain part, a certain state of, uh, uh, certain uh, you know, certain reality at certain point in certain culture in, in the United States or, or Western Europe. Or not, uh, the, this is not the whole picture. So there are some there were some other models. I'll go very fast through some of them. Uh, one of the first circular models was the model of Whipple, Brush, and McGrew. And as you can see, they invented some new names. They pointed more attention to the psychological aspect, not, not the uh, biophysiological aspects, as in Kaplan, uh, uh, as in Kaplan or uh, Masters and Johnson model. But what they did, the important thing they did, they closed the circle. So this is maybe the most important part here. They closed this circle so that the resolution phase, where the reflection is phase will have some influence on the consecutive you know, circles in, in the human sexual response. And the, uh, one of the elaboration of these models, especially applied, uh, as it is currently applied to, uh, to women's sexuality, is the Passon model. And it, as you see, it's pretty complicated, um, and I think it, uh, that's its, uh, its strength. Uh, and no, I never know where to start with, and the, the model always evokes some kind, you know, of smile and excitation in, in, in my group of students when I present this very model. But I would start with uh, with two major, uh, maybe with describing some basic features of the model. One basic feature is that, as you see, there is no spontaneous desire uh, anywhere in the beginning. It's just somewhere in the middle. So the model assumes that. The, this primary desire that, that was in the linear models does not necessarily has to be the first thing you experience when you, when you engage somehow sexually, sex, sexually. So that's one thing. Uh, uh, the model assumes that a lot of non-sexual uh, rewards or uh, need for emotional intimacy, previous satisfactory sexual experiences uh, can um, make a person um, motivated and open to sexual stimuli, be more receptive to what will be happening in, 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 in various contexts and to process uh, emotionally, psychologically, and, and, and biologically, biologically 
uh, sexual stimuli, and this can lead to then to uh, to to, uh, to 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 arousal, and the arousal can then evoke the, for example, the desire. So the desire can be actually secondary; it can occur at any time during the process, not necessarily in the in the beginning. So the model is very flexible, as you see. You know? It allows the desire to be somewhere. And that there are a lot of psychological things, a lot of contextual things that fuel sexuality, fuel the sexual encounter of, of, two, of two people. Just to let you know, there is a model of Lulan, which is actually not circular, no, 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 no linear. It assumes, as far as I understand the model, because it's a new model for me, that sexuality can start at any point. So it can start with the willingness, which is more cognitive, attitude that I want to have sex, I want to engage, I don't know, because I want to make something good to someone I love, uh, even if my body doesn't, that does not. Uh, it can start with desire, with excitement, or even from the physiological response, or the, uh, how Dominic put in, uh, pleasure organs, yeah, mm -hmm. not, not sexual, not reproductive organs, but pleasure organs. It can sometimes even start with orgasm, and finally to Pleasure. Just to let you know, there are some biological models like the Bancroft and Johnson model. More, the model which I really like because it helps to take the in the the, the, sex, sex, the sexual history. It's a very heuristic model. Not nothing compli uh, complicated at all. The sexual tipping point, uh, point model. It just assumes two things: that there are a group of excitatory factors and a group of inhibitory factors, of, of diverse origins, so biological, social, cultural, and personal, and they are changeable. In each person, in different moments, in different relationships, in different contexts, and within and, and, and among people. So this is a very heuristic, a very dis general, general, general model. Uh, and the good enough sex model is rather a set of different um, assumptions uh, uh, about sex, it's more a uh, manifest, so like that sex is good, that it is uh, inherently rela relational, that uh, uh, realistic, age-appropriate, accurate and reasonable sexual knowledge and explanation, expectations are essential for sexual satisfaction, there is something about good physical health, about the importance of relaxation, the sex points, the six, six, six points seem to be pretty reasonable like that sexual touch and emotional pleasure are as valuable as performance so it you know detaches us from uh, the terror of performance which uh, linear model, model, models uh, assumed yeah that you have to follow and reach the orgasm to 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 be to be healthy sexually healthy um, that uh, variable and flexible sexual experiences are valuable, um, etc. That, uh, that sex serves several purposes, uh, that there are different arousal styles, uh, like partner interaction, sensual self entrancement, or role en enactment. Uh, there is something about gender differences. 11 point, which I find pretty, pretty, pretty interesting that sex is integrated into real life and the real life is integrated into sex. I, I, I think that uh, some of the problems our clients or patients might have, that the sex is somewhere apart from their lives, from their everyday experience. The splitting is one of the mechanisms which is sometimes described within, for example, gay population with their problems and uncontrollable sexual behaviors as the way of, for example, uh, distancing themselves from, from their identities and, uh, and uh, other emotional problems. So again, the question, just for you to, to remember and to try to answer it in our discussion. I asked my, myself the question as, 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 as well. And uh, during, I'll let me start with the second part, the prevalence data. Uh, I, you know, provocatively put the question mark here. Uh, why? Because I wanted to avoid percentages with odds ratios, etc., etc., the whole statistics, that's one thing. The second thing is that so starting from transgender population, it's actually, I could say that we are lacking data. 
when talking about lesbian sexual sexuality, lesbian sexual dysfunctions or problems, the data are really sparse. And when we are talking about gay pro sexual dysfunctions or problems, there are some data, there are actually some bigger internet study, but the, the results are conflicting. Conflicting. The, the methodologies are different. Uh, so, one study would say that gay men more often have problems with erectile, dis disorder, erectile dysfunction uh, and less often has problems with uh, premature ejaculation. The other studies will show there are no difference. Yet another studies will say the gay population has problems with delayed or inhibited orgasm. So there are conflicted data and different methodologies, which is why I put the question mark. Uh, actually, we had some conflicted data on, 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 on general population on sexuality because the methodologies are also crazily different. Uh, but uh, there are some problems that might seem to be of special interest to, to for example, to these two populations. A very neglected topic actually addressed in one of the bigger researches, uh, research I, I found of Ros Rosa. It's on anal dyspareunia, as you know, the concept of dyspareunia. It is a pain during the sexual encounter or interaction, and anal dyspareunia would be the pain during anal penetration. So this would be the very dysfunction specific, for example, for very specific for gay men, but also for, for other sexual diversities. Yeah, but it seems to be sent, not maybe so, that's maybe the difference, not maybe central to gay sexual life, but very important. And uh, the research of Rosar says that this is a pretty common problem, uh, um, and in in like about, I, I can't exactly remember the number, it was like about 10 or 12 percent of gay populations seemed to be enough intense that it prevented gay men from engaging or you know, continuing the sexual uh, interaction. And uh, he also presented interesting uh, results showing that those who had this problem uh, or the problem was associated with the lack of digital stimulation before, lack of appropriate lubrication, but also it was somehow connected to um, minority stress and internalized homophobia issues. Um, like lack of, for example, support in someone's gay life, etc. And in lesbian, aversion to oral sex was sometimes pointed to as, as something that is uh, pretty common or specific. Uh, and desire problems for, uh, or discre discrepancies referred to sometimes as lesbian uh, bad death. So I think that you can very often meet in literature, but when you look at the bigger data, there are no data to support, to, to show the say that, 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 that to, to support the existence of, of such a ph phenomenon as lesbian bad death. Uh, and now sh shortly about each other of the group. I tried to. Uh, I use some 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 uh, papers that uh, Dominic sent uh, sent me on, on, the, on the problems, and try to um, because we don't have so much time. I tried to to just to shortly present uh, some interesting point. I think so. Uh, the differences between gay and heterosexual male sexuality that may influence uh, uh, sexual functioning or are to be taken into account when, when working with uh, gay clients is, for example, the lack of uh, you know, central meaning of vaginal, vaginal uh, coitus in, 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 in the population of gay men, because there, there is usually no vagina. Uh, the stigmatized will, uh, stigma, stigma related to homosexuality, the sexual object is stigmatized in this, uh, in this, in this population. There is no fear of potential pregnancy, but it is something that should facilitate you know, uh, lack of, you know, sexuality without this specific heterosexual anxiety. Uh, a very interesting point to be remembered is that roles and positions are fully reversible. So, on one hand, it may have some to deal with the question of, um, of, of power, because um, Stereotypically, some sexual roles are associated with, with, with power, with dominance. Uh, and another thing, I th another thing worth uh, 
uh, spotting here is that uh, this can be also for some gay men uh, an opportunity to avoid, uh, avoid, uh, avoid managing their sexual problems. Because when you are, for example, having problems with erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation, you may resort to, for example, the bottom roll yeah, to be a passive, so you don't have to worry anymore about your erectile problems. So it is something positive on one hand, on the other hand, might my, 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 my negative, depends how we assess it. How it, uh, if, it, if it does good to, 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 to the very patient or couple. There are less obvious sexual scripts and uh, men are more performance and pleasure oriented, which, which may create a shared perspective for, for, for gay couples, for example, and enhance their sexuality, but maybe it can create also problems. There are also some differences in gay makeup. Um, there is more approval for, um, for for sex without love, for uh, outside, uh, for relationship outside the um, in, uh, the very you know relationship uh, for for for, for non monogamous relationships. Um, there is possibly lower value attached to fidelity. There are some different reasons for having or not having sex that is compared to heterosexual men and for example reproduction, emotional closeness, these are ones partner were, were, rated, was, were rated as less important by homosexual men, but fear of AIDS, for example, was rated as, 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 as the reason for not having sex. There are also some other you know, possibilities to be taken into uh, uh, account. Uh, I will not go thoroughly through each of them, but there is a list for you. Uh, there is a, the effect of male gender roles. We have to remember that gay men are also men. So uh, there are some assumptions about uh, male sexual function. Uh, as I put it here on this slide, uh, for example, oh, something changed. Okay, does it still make sense for me? Okay, there is an interaction about uh, between you know, sexual identity, beliefs about masculinity and, and potency. As you know, there are very common uh, beliefs about, for example, sexual function and attached to, to men, like that uh, a man should always be rigid, a uh, man can, uh, should have as many elections as, 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 as he wishes to, uh, a man could, should be able to respond with erection in any circumstances, so many men just need, in my opinion, some education that the penis is attached to the heart, but not attached to the pelvis. I really like this metaphor because they sometimes don't see it. You know, it must be ready, it must be functional at any time. Uh, so this must be some the effect of a male gender roles. There is a problem of internalized homophobia, and this slide was, oh, it wasn't like this in my computer, anyway. Uh, so there is a kind of a conflict between sexual behavior and uh, negative values attached to this behavior. And the example of this in, in, se in the sexual realm can be, for example, negative values attached to, to animal sex, which might be treated as unnatural. Like I, 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 I happen to hear comment, uh, you know, beliefs like it was not created by the evolution to, to be you know, penetrated by the penis is not the part of the sexual system, etc., etc., and some of the gay men may share these beliefs. And there is a problem of, uh, of compensation that must be relevant to sexual activity. Oh, it wasn't like this, I'm sorry. Uh, huh. Because gay men want to compensate, they're somehow they perceived inferior position, for example, in the society or as men, they may tend to idealize the, 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 the themselves or idealize their sexual relationship. When you idealize this, it is bound to, some, to increase stress, to increase performance anxiety, but it may also create difficulties in admitting that I can have any, some sexual problems, that I'm not ideal, that I'm not perfect, that our couple has problems. And these, uh, these couples may, for example, have difficulty in accepting this and, looking th uh, and, and also difficulty in, in looking for, uh, for, for, for help. Bartosz, uh, would you like to use your computer? 
What do you think? Is yours already powered on? Uh, yeah, but it's just maybe last slides with this okay. this sort okay. of thing. So maybe I, I didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, 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 it's also on MacBook, so I thought it should yeah, yeah. work. Yeah. 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 It's just yeah. Yeah. it's just not what you're expecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah completely different <coughs> different buttons. So. Yeah. Um, pro there could be some problems with identity and intimacy problems. Intimacy <coughs> problems can be a source of different difficulties. And, 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 in gay men, they may, may be strictly bound to the to the to the hetero negativism to, to internalize the homophobia. Uh, abuse or traumatic early experiences might be of relevance reactions to HIV and uh, AIDS infection. I will try and check it out with it. Huh? Okay, that's all right. So, for example, when talking about when speaking about reactions to HIV and AIDS in, uh, uh, problems. Some men may just lack their sexual experience because of the fear and avoidance uh, and not engaging, not having experienced any sexual contact. The other men who, for example, acquire Tata HIV may be, you know, uh, sunk in, the, in, a, in, a, in a guilt, self-blame, uh, depression, uh, self-accusations uh, because, of, because of that. There may be some problems with continuous, for example, in this context. Uh, there are there may be some interpersonal aspects of HIV infection, and of course also some controversies uh, with medical treatment of erectile dysfunction in, in men uh, having AIDS. For example. If it's uh, ethical or not ethical to prescribe, for example, Viagra or other uh, phosphodiesterized uh, uh, in, in, in inhibitors. Um, you have also to remember about organic and psychiatric problems in this population. You all know that, that there is an increase in psychiatric problems or emotional problems as due to the minority stress in, in, in gay men. So, so depression may be pretty common and anxiety disorders may be pretty common. The treatment with SSRIs can be pretty common. So, so we also have to take it into uh, uh, account. Um, of course, interpersonal factors, social cultural factors are to be taken uh, into uh, 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 account. For example, interpersonal and social, social cultural factors uh, could be the beliefs about homosexual lifestyles and relationships, can be attitudes to coming out. Uh, for example, a gay couple can have different views to the coming out and it can create tensions. Uh, so it also can uh, can be present in uh, in sexual uh, in sexual realm for, 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 for this for this couple. So now let's move to to lesbians. Of course, there is also a characteristic of women in sexuality. It is assumed that women in general tend to uh, tend to have lower desire. But it's true. Uh, so if there are two of them, maybe the uh, sex is not that often as when there are two men. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. It's something to be discussed. The problem of internalized homophobia is of relevance here as well. Uh, sexual politics can be of, of relevance. The expression of anger and aggression it, 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 it will be also you know, a part of the you know, uh, gender-related scripts you know, that the woman should not be aggressive, that the woman should not uh, ask for sex, to not, to, you know, should not be the active part. So it also may fuel this, this uh, lower desire you know, or lower sexual activity in the, in the lesbian uh, in couples. Uh, some previous experiences with men could be of relevance sexual abuse, which some studies say that is more prevalent in, in, in women. And actually, both in both populations of, of, of gay men and lesbian women, the alcohol and substance abuse can also be of relevance, which seems to be more prevalent in these populations. And something that I would like to, to draw your, specifically draw your attention to is the fusion and merger uh, phenomenon. In, uh, in, 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 in gay, in, in lesbian couples, uh, the fusion is a process of connection through loss of individuation, 
Uh, and it is uh, supposed that uh, two men, when there is um, you know, this sexual difference seems to be lacking, uh, that's the first thing, there is a bigger tendency to be to, to, to experience empathy, to feel empathy to, to, to the second part. Um, the defense against the others, the, the, uh, the, the homophobic and homonegativistic environment can be another thing here. Uh, all of these factors may play a role in, uh, in, 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 in making two women be more prone to somehow to, 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 to disappear, to, to merge, to fuse with each other. And um, some assume that uh, the differences, the barriers, uh, the struggle uh, are needed to fuel sexual desires. So this is how um, the sexual uh, desire problems are sometimes understood in, 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 in lesbian women. And a few words about transgender uh, sexuality. Uh, this topic uh, is still a great uh, taboo and is very neglected. Um, you know, tra traditionally and classically, a transsexual narrative was expected. Uh, this uh, transsexual narrative, for example, also assumed that men to female transsexual people were supposed to be asexual and the female to male were supposed to be highly sexual and exclusively attractive to men. But current observation and research seems to show that, um, that there are a wide, a wide range of sexual uh, orientations and sexual needs and, and behaviors in, 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 in trans people. Um, <coughs> there are some specific things that are worth noticing here. That sexual orientation sometimes can change, for, for example, following transition. Um, and another thing which is not on this slide, maybe on some next slides, is that uh, there is a problem <coughs> of, uh, yeah, I, I lost it actually, yeah. ah. maybe later on, yeah, there is a problem of losing the heterosexual um, hetero hetero privilege in, 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 in relationships that trans people have with their partners, for example. So another thing, one thing is a sexual orientation problem. For example, during the transition in, 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 in already established um, uh, couples, the other is the loss of, of, of heterosexual privilege. And for example, a, a couple which is supposed to be heterosexual transforms, transits to, be, 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 to become actually a homosexual couple. Um, transgender people may experience diverse problems. These could be problems with dating and intimacy because there are situations that actually uh, um, you know, open the question of, uh, of the previous lives, pre-transitional lives of, of transgender people. So it mean the dating can not, can not, may not be that easy as it is for, 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 for other people as well as intimacy, which is for example Simply bounced to nudity, nudity as well. Uh, forming partnerships and, um, and trans the transitioning within the already established relationships that I, what I mentioned, we, these are all problems that, uh, that, that are to be faced. Uh, other stressors that impact the sexual function of tra in the transgender um, people are medical treatments. So, as you know, some hormone treatment, for example, with androgens, would enhance. You know, the sexual drive, but the anti androgen treatment will, will rather inhibit this sexual drive. Um, you know, more general stress is connected with, uh, with, with costs of all the procedures, uh, work related problems, parenting, social scrutiny, violence and discrimination uh, can also have uh, the role in the sexual functioning of trans people. Here are the examples of the unique sexual orientations, some just some of the examples, uh, some identifications that, that trans people may, may, may take, like pansexual, queer, transgender lesbian, or uh, bisexual when dressed in female clothes, otherwise heterosexual, just of a few examples given by Lev and Samuel. 
what can we do? We should not assume that, uh, not always assume that relation on discomfort or discontent is directly linked to the transition, for example. Um, it's good to remember that gender transitions and gender queer fantasies in issues can have some relevance also to, to, to our other people, not to trans people. Um, and there is, there is the heterosexual privilege, loss of heterosexual privilege mentioned. In general, it is critical not to make any assumptions about sexual orientation or sexual practices of trans people but instead embrace the multitude of possibilities for sexual desire and partnership. So again, I can we come to, to some similar conclusion that the open stance, you know, the, 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 the position to be interested, open to, to, you know, to, to for, 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 for whatever the client brings with them could be a, a reasonable one. And I wanted to present the model, remind you of the model that, uh, that Agatha already mentioned. It's also changed here. It is the, um, the explicit model, which I find pretty useful to, 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 to make first steps when, when working with clients. So it assumes this uh, permission phase, so permission for a physician to discuss sex with the patient. Uh, sexual issues with the patient, permission for the patient to discuss sexual concerns now in the future, uh, permission for each patient or couple to continue normal, in the understood as not potentially harmful for people, sexual behaviors. Uh, the next step would be to give limited information, so this is the psychoeducational part about sexuality. I think our clients, our gender and sexual diversity clients might specifically need the psychoeducation on this on this topics because it's a I think it's a commonly neglected topic everywhere. And so the our sexual education for, um, for, for for sexual and gender diversity is so I think this is a very important part of the of, of the model and very powerful. So this is uh, a moment in which we can clarify this information, we can dispel different kind of myths, we can provide factual information in a limited manner. Then there is time for more specific uh, suggestions which are more directly related to a particular problem and the last part, the intensive treatment, which is providing a more uh, intensive uh, care, psychotherapy, couples therapy, etc. So the implicit moment once again. And this is a joke, you know, it's my lecture, what, I will translate it, so, so it, there's a famous uh, draw drawer in Poland, Marek Raczkowski, he's very open-minded and very crazy, and uh, this is a little bit about addictions, but it concerns sex as well, so here's the date, a day without a cigarette, here, here's the day without alcohol, here's the day without the coffee, and here's the day without masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I like his drawings, it's pretty fun. Okay, thank you.